In automotive circles, Japan has made a name for itself as the builder of among the most reliable cars on sale, while Italy has long prided itself as being the stylistic home of motoring design, each one demonstrating their craft on magnificent machines that have set the world ablaze time and again. In 1983, though, the tables were turned when each of these nations designed a car that, rather than utilizing their strengths, comprised their weaknesses, and thus the Alfa Romeo Arna was born a motorized crossover that should have been a major success, but instead ended in calamitous failure. The Arna's story begins in the early 1970s, when European car makers began to suffer greatly due to strife caused by militant trade unions, and while companies such as British Leyland and Renault were heavily disrupted by the strike action, it was the Italian car firms that suffered the most, with Fiat and Alfa Romeo both struggling to maintain their market shares as their stylistic but shambolically built cars drove away buyers. The gap left in the market by the retreating European firms was quickly filled by the Japanese, who were rapidly gaining traction as they introduced reliable and sturdy models that easily outperformed the native crop. In desperation, the car builders of Europe turned to the common market for assistance, which was provided through the implementation of heavy import tariffs on products built outside the European Union severely hampering the profits of Japanese companies. This didn't last long, though, as Japanese cars continued to sell in Europe, and eventually, as a last resort, the first of a long line of indigenous car builders would form an alliance with the Japanese firm, that being Honda and British Leyland, who together began work in 1979 on the Triumph Acclaim, a rebadged and slightly re-engineered version of the Honda Ballad, but one that ably married Japanese reliability with British internal refinement and comfort. Initially, there was much hostility towards the BL Honda deal, as other European firms considered this a Trojan horse maneuver by the Japanese builders to get past the EU tariffs. But in the background, many executives were fully aware that the only way their companies would survive was to improve on quality and reliability, the most notable being Alfa Romeo. By 1980, Alfa Romeo had become one of the most renowned car names in the automotive world creating both spicy and luxurious sports cars like the Spider and GTV, but also practical family cars like the Alpha Sud, one of the best handling front-wheel drive cars in history. But due to violent clashes between the workers and the management in this period, these stylish products left the factory with faults and reliability concerns that had rendered the reputation of the Alpha name laughable. Desperate to reverse their fortunes, Alpha looked on the British Leyland deal with Honda as an opportunity to replace the then nine-year-old Alpha Sud, and thus early discussions began between Takashi Ishihara of Nissan and Alfa Romeo president Ettore Masachetti, resulting in the signing of a memorandum in Tokyo on October 9, 1980. This Alpha-Nissan joint venture would produce 60,000 new medium-sized cars from a specially constructed factory at Pratola Serra in the Campania region of southern Italy and would come under the name Arna or Alfa Romeo Nissan Autofaccioli. Despite strong opposition from Fiat, who at the time were also suffering heavily from poor sales, while again considering the Arna deal a move by the Japanese firms to get past European tariffs, the Nissan Alfa Romeo joint venture, the latter of whom was nationalized, and working under the auspices of the Istituto per la Ricostruzione Industriale, or IRI, was endorsed by the Italian Prime Minister Francesco Cossiga who hoped that the success of joint Alfa Romeo-Nissan products would help to reduce the amount of state spending being made to keep the company afloat. As mentioned, the Arna was designed to be a replacement for the highly popular but aging Alfa Sud, creating a small family hatchback with practical dimensions that would rival the Volkswagen Golf and Fiat Ritmo, but due to the way in which the deal between Alfa Romeo and Nissan had been signed, the latter was tasked with constructing body panels for the car at their own Opama plant in Yokosuka, Japan. These would be pulled out of the Nissan Cherry assembly lines and shipped to the new Protola Serra factory before being fitted to the finished product, the resulting Arna being eventually launched at the Frankfurt Motor Show in 1983 and took a majority of its external looks, including styling and body panels from the Nissan Cherry, while the drivetrain, brakes, engines, suspension, steering rack and transmission remained mostly unchanged from the outgoing Alfa Sud. Upon its release, the presence of the Arna on the European market was seen as a serious threat by the rival Fiat, who perceived the car as the beginning of a potential corporate invasion by Nissan in the same manner as Honda in the UK. Unfortunately, the Arna exhibited the worst qualities of the two firms that had been brought together to build it, 
the strengths of Italian car builders being with styling, while the Japanese were more suited for design and reliability. As a result of the dubious decision to have Alfa Romeo do the internal mechanics and technology, while Nissan did the styling, the car that customers were faced with was a practical but unattractive variation of the Cherry, with notoriously poor Alfa Sud electrics, compounded further by very vague handling characteristics inherited from its Japanese origins, which resulted in terrifying levels of understeer. In terms of performance, aside from the handling issues, the flat 4 Alfa Romeo Boxer engine produced 85 horsepower, giving the car a 0 to 60 time of 14 seconds and a top speed of 106 miles an hour while the comparative 1983 Volkswagen Golf had a 0-60 time of 10.6 seconds, and the Peugeot 205 had a 0-60 time of 11.6 seconds. Faced with poor sales as the car's reputation quickly spread, Alfa Romeo attempted to distance themselves from the model by having Spanish versions, built out of the Ebro Trucks plant in Avila, Spain, marketed as the Nissan Cherry Europe, while Nissan were fully aware that the car would struggle commercially and thus didn't put it on sale in Japan. Nissan would instead exploit their new Italian connection by selling the special Pulsar Milano X1, a variation of the N13 Pulsar hatchback which differed through the fitting of a transversely mounted Nissan E engine, while also adopting black and green interior trim from the Arna TI Cherry Europe GTI. The main reason as to the failure of the Arna though, was that the Nissan Cherry was already on sale in Europe as a three-door and five-door hatchback and thus, in the face of dwindling sales already compounding the firm's mounting losses, the IRI put Alfa Romeo up for sale in 1985, and after initially proposing their own joint venture, the rival Fiat bought the company in its entirety in 1986, after motions were made for its purchase by Ford, merging it into the Fiat ranks alongside former rival Lancia. As for the Arna, with the purchase of Alfa Romeo by Fiat having voided the deal the company previously had with Nissan, the shipment of cherry panels from Japan ceased, and the car was discontinued in 1987 after the few remaining parts were used up, ending a production run of 53,047 units, while the former Arna factory at Pratola Serra is now used by Fiat to build four- and five-cylinder petrol and diesel engines. While the Alfa Romeo 33 of 1983 replaced the Arna in the product lineup and would remain in production as a competitive machine until 1995, Nissan had established a strong foothold in Europe thanks to the Arna Venture, allowing them passage through the EU tariffs that resulted in the creation of a dedicated factory in Sunderland in northeast England during 1984, and the acquisition of plants in Avila and Barcelona in Spain, these facilities continuing to produce highly successful Nissan models to this day. Today, the Arna maintains its poor reputation and has largely been forgotten by the motoring world, having been rendered extinct in the UK while a few continue to roam about its native Italy. In terms of seeing the joint partnerships of European and Japanese builders, the model was more an exercise in allowing Nissan access to the European market by way of a desperate native car maker, rather than intending to create a machine that was truly competitive, foregoing the best attributes of its creators by instead encompassing their worst aspects.